Hey, welcome back. If you haven't noticed, the 5G revolution is upon us. Today you have your choice of multiple different 5G cell phones. And of course, the cell phone companies are rolling out 5G all across the United States and the world. Some think the next decade will be the decade of artificial intelligence and machine learning. Self-driving vehicles? Well, those are already here, and they're only going to get smarter. Each of these things are going to require faster and faster processing. Stick around. Today we're going to talk about Acronix, a company that involves all of these and so much more. Acronix specializes in making FPGAs, Field Programmable Gate Accelerators. This video is going to have tons of acronyms in it. I'll try to explain them as best I can along the way. So when it comes to data processing within a computer system, the choices are between flexibility and easy use and performance and power efficiency. CPUs and GPUs are easy to use but lack that performance and power efficiency. An ASIC, which is an application-specific integrated circuit, is designed specifically to do just one thing. It's very good at performance and power, but doesn't have a lot of flexibility. So Acronix makes three products. They have the VectorPath accelerator card that has a FPGA on board. They make the SpeedCore eFPGA, and they also make the Speedster 7 TFPGA. Now the Speedster 7 is their bread and butter product right now. It's intended to be used in 5G infrastructure, computational storage, tests and measurements, of course AI and machine learning, networking, and also in computer acceleration. In 2019, Acronix became the first company to put an FPGA onto an ASIC as well as onto an SOC, which stands for System on Chip. A System on Chip is essentially a tiny computer minus the storage capacity and they're very crucial components of our modern cell phones. And lastly, the other product that they offer is the Vector Accelerator Card, which is designed to reduce time to market when developing high-performance compute and acceleration functions, such as goes into artificial intelligence, machine learning, networking, and data center applications. The Electronics Engineering Journal has a nice background article about Acronix that appeared in September 2020. Acronix started in 2004 as a founded funder startup that was originally using licensed technology from Cornell University and has since matured into a Silicon Valley semiconductor and IP company, which gives the likes of Intel and Xilinx constant trouble, according to the author Kevin Morris. The author describes how he thinks that Acronix has managed to survive by executing the perfect pivot. What does he mean by that? Well, during the 16 years that Acronix has been around, numerous other programmable logic startups have failed. They have run head-on into Xilinx and Intel slash Altera. Those two companies own approximately 90% of the FPGA market. While Xilinx and Altera were going head-to-head, -head, trying to create a universal product that could be used for any application, Acronix managed to differentiate themselves by focusing on specific narrow applications that helped them to stand out from their competitors. In 2010, they surprised this industry by moving to Intel's contract fab for their FPGA. That allowed them to take advantage of significant process technology that Intel enjoyed at that time. It also gave them a few years of strategic wins, which allowed them enough time to get to their next pivot. In 2016, Acronix made a huge pivot. Up until then, if you wanted leading edge FPGA fabric on your ASIC device, there was no reasonable path to make it. If you wanted it on your SOC, well then you were going to have to buy the FPGA along with the processor core, the memory resources, uh, the I.O. or anything else you wanted on there from the manufacturer of the FPGA. And that came with huge margins for the FPGA maker. Acronix made the pivot by offering their FPGA as intellectual property. They were willing to license it out to other companies and they provided the software to help those companies integrate their FPGA into their products. About the same time, Acronix announced plans to release FPGAs in a chiplet form and that would allow them to package their chiplet 
uh, with other chiplets in a system-in-system -system package. In 2019, Acronix rolled out their current flagship FPGA, the Speedster 7T. That's what I showed you earlier in this presentation. And that is a high performance line that's aimed at AI and other demanding acceleration workloads. Through a partnership, Acronix is also producing the Vector Path S7 accelerator card that I showed you earlier. And that will allow their customers to drop a Vector Path card into their systems and immediately get the benefits of an FPGA without having to go through the process of designing all that high speed interface. He also states that it will be interesting to see how the eFPGA strategy plays out in particular. Remember, Acronix was the first company to put that eFPGA onto an ASIC or onto an SOC. And he thinks that it will give the company a strong edge that will engage their customers in a mode that the competition most likely cannot or will not choose to match. Now, how is Acronix coming to the NASDAQ? Well, they're going to merge with Ace Convergence Acquisition Corp, which is, as you guessed it, another SPAC. Ace will be adding $230 million of cash held in trust, and they will also be adding another $150 million through private investors. The valuation of the company will be just a little more than $2 billion, and when it's done, the Ace public shareholders will own approximately 11% of the company. They are anticipating an expected closing date uh, within Q1 of 2021, although somewhere else I did see Q2. Here is how Acronix historical revenue and projections are looking. In 2018, they had $61 million of revenue, and really that was all coming from test and measurement. Now, all of their revenue has essentially been coming from the Speedster 22 chip, which is an older model. The light blue is the Speedster 7T chip. You can see the projection there for this year. And then really in 2022 is when the Speedster 22 chip revenue really goes down and the 7T chip as well as the Speedcore IP. Again, that's the FPGA on an ASIC or on an SOC. The Speedcore IP, they also see revenue coming in significantly from that. You can also see that they've expanded out their end market, going from previously just test and measurement, almost 100%, to test and measurement really being just about 17%, with networking and data center uh, occupying a huge portion of that, and 5G and automotive really just a small portion of that right now. As far as the rest of their financials, we've already seen that they only made $4 million there in 2019. Uh, this slide is a little bit old, so the estimate for 2020 was going to be $104 million, with revenue rising to $195 million by 2022. Now, one nice thing about this company is that they're already making money. So the other nice thing about this company are their margins. While in 2020, we're looking at $104.9 million of revenue, their gross margin is 79%, and their non-GAAP margin is 32%. Here's how they see their long-term operating model. They plan on year-over-year -year growth of 20 to 25% with a gross margin in the 70s and the EBIT margin uh, in the low 30s. It's always good to know what a company's potential market looks like if you're going to be buying their stock. The high-end FPGA market for 2020 was about $1.9 billion with a 12% compounded annual growth rate looking at about $3.4 billion uh, five years from now. Additionally, the digital IP accelerator market going from about 3.3 billion to 5.4 billion five years from now. So currently right around a 5 billion market becoming a 10 billion market within the next five years. Over to the right, they've nicely broken down the projected compounded annual growth rate for uh, focused markets uh, depending on what you're most interested in. I won't read those to you, but you can always pause the video to take a look at that. How about ACEV stock? Remember, uh, Ace Convergence Acquisition Corp is who Acronix will be merging with. Uh, their stock was trading just a little more than $10 until words start to leak out that they were about to make a merger. It bumped up to $12 
uh, yesterday after the merger news and has since come back down to around 1144. So this is a wonderful time to get in on a company that really will have fantastic uh, margins. This infusion of cash into their company is going to allow them to accelerate their growth significantly. Will they ever catch up with Xilinx or Intel? Probably not. But you know, they've managed to keep themselves afloat by pivoting and making crucial changes just when the other guys start to figure out how to neutralize them. I hope this helped you with your due diligence. I've given you a history of Acronix, uh, how they've started, uh, what they do, what sets them apart from their competitors. Uh, we've talked about the merger that will be taking place and uh, the infusion of cash that will uh, help this company and you've learned about their stock price. If you enjoyed this, please give us a thumbs up. Again, we'd love to have you as a subscriber. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And until next time, enjoy your investing.